My name is Lena Kitenge and I am from Here Technologies and I will be hosting this Map My City session of this incredible urban festival. Uh, I am the Senior Community Development Analyst for Here Technologies and today's session is mainly going to be around these particular topics. So first of all, I'm going to do a very short introduction to Here Technologies, who we are, what we're about. I know a lot of people have no idea who we are and what on earth are we going to be talking about but hopefully I'll be able to assist with that and then I'll go into digital mapping why it is we do what we do a little bit of you know how it is that it's incorporated the importance of it as well uh, following that I will speak to some of the tools that we use um, in digital mapping and then we'll get into the how which is my favorite part the actual training session where we can see how we can add roads and places and different features and attributes to our online map so we can get started now with here technologies and who we are so we are basically a location digital location technology company the core of what we do is creating and providing location technology uh, tools and platforms um, sourcing location data and uploading all of this data onto our mapping platform so we provide individuals entrepreneurs as well as developers as well to access access to this um, online map, as well as access to free location APIs and code to build different platforms. So the essential of who we are is a location company. The core of what we are is location technology. We were formerly known as Nokia or Navtech. So that was, you know, back in the day, and then we got this awesome rebrand, and now we're known as Here Technologies. And uh, that is that that is the core of who we are and what we do. Some of our partners, you know, include uh, people like Facebook, Garmin, if you've ever used Esri, if you've ever used um, Incarn, navigation in a Mercedes or an Audi or BMW, those are some of the partners that are using our maps. So all the maps that we create go into these different um, partner organizations, platforms and tools. So we've been around for a very long time. Like I said, we were Nokia Navtech back in the day, over 30 years now, you know, we, we are a worldwide organization across all five of the, con across all five continents, sorry, and we have offices in over 56 countries. So I'm, of course, based in the Johannesburg office, and I am part of the Middle East and Africa uh, group or, or team that works towards um, community and data sourcing for our live online map. So that is here technologies in a nutshell. So the data collection that we do, of course, um, we can source from places like governments and municipalities, from the private sector. We also do drive. So I don't know if any of you have ever seen the here true drive cars. They're driving along the highway, collecting all of that location data. We also collect data in that way. And then all of this, of course, gets integrated onto our map. Uh, just so we could have an up to date fresh map that reflects you know the changes that are happening in our world around us so if there's been a change to a road name or a particular structure we want to ensure that those changes are reflected on our map and of course this helps with you know management and modeling of different road networks or road systems or infrastructure projects whether it's for government or for private sector all of this information is then of course used by them um, and is collected for them. Another way, of course, that we collect some of our mapping information or our mapping data, sorry, is via our community digital mapping program. And this is where we partner with different stakeholders, whether it's universities, um, GIS departments, or student societies, or even just GIS organizations that are keen and, and excited to, to, to be a part of um, a program that, that, does, that focuses on digital mapping, we partner with them and the aim of this of course is to up obviously we do want an up-to-date and fresh map that is the core of of our business we have to of course make sure it is up to date but with the community digital mapping program we aim to upskill the youth um, we provide them with digital mapping skills we provide them with coding skills we provide them with access to location technology tools and platforms in the aim that we'll be able to somewhat assist them whether it's with projects that they're doing or just having a general understanding of what exists in the GIS world 
world, in the location technology world. Um, and of course, all of their edits get integrated onto the map, um, as we mentioned earlier, to make sure that it is a fresh map, that it's up to date, that everybody can use it, whether you are using it for GPS and you know, you're trying to get from point A to B, or you're using it for specific projects and infrastructure development projects. That really is the core and the reason why we do that. And so some of the tools that we have available and that we will be looking at today, the main one being, of course, Map Creator. That is where the online map is. That is where we will be looking at how to add a road, how to add a place, how to make changes to different information and mapping attributes that may exist or that we're adding to the map. We also have a tool called Here Studio, which I will speak to, but we won't get into too much today. And that is for anyone who wants to build a map from scratch. So if you have no coding background, but maybe you want to build a map that represents the, um, the pollution levels or the air quality in certain places, you can do that using Here Studio, where you upload your own data and you're able to now visualize this map that showcases whatever sort of information you want to show. So if it's air quality in a particular area or solar systems that have been installed in a particular city or even the number of trees in particular neighborhoods, you're able to now showcase that information onto a map using Studio. We also have here APIs and a developer platform. So if you are a coder or a developer, or maybe you're starting out or you're interested in that as well, that is available for you as well. Um, Again, it's not something I'll be going into today. I just want to make sure that you know you are aware that there are free APIs that are available for the coders and developers in the call. And um, they, they are all obviously location-based APIs. So your maps, your routing, your fleet management, and so forth and so on. And so the core tool that we're going to be using today, like I said, is called Here Map Creator. And it is basically a live on a live online mapping platform and tool that is used by millions of people around the world to make edits and changes to the online map to ensure that it reflects, you know, the reality and reflects all of the changes that are happening in the real world. And so it is a free tool. You can edit different sorts of features on it, as you will see when we when we go into the training, whether it's roads, whether it's house numbers, whether it's places or points of interest. It is uh, free for you to register. You obviously just create you know, your, your, your profile with your name, your email address, and you can basically just start editing from wherever in the world you are, and you can make changes to edits um, that relate to the changes in the communities within where you live or within which you, 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 you frequent. And so behind the map, what tends to happen is that we have a team of uh, engineers, if you will, that verify all of the edits that come in. Because obviously, as you know, this is a free tool, so anyone can use it. So knowing that, we are very, very, very much um, cautious with how we integrate the edits and the types of edits we allow to be integrated. So of course, we go into universities and we get the students to make all these edits and to, you know, to make sure that they're up to date and so forth and so on. But we also want to make sure that, you know, students aren't just playing around with the map or just having fun with the map, because this is a real map that's used by millions of people. So we have to have that verification process. We have to make sure that we're not putting bars in the middle of preschools and, you know, we're not putting rivers in the middle of a house and so forth and so on. It's important to ensure that we verify it on the back end so that we can ensure that we provide the highest quality map to everybody who needs to use it for whatever reason it is that they're using it for. So this is just an example of the um, here studio and how you can build your own, own map. So this is an example, I think in Netherlands it is, where um, they were mapping um, solar installation, the solar installation in this particular area. So you're basically able to create a map that looks similar to this with whatever sort of details that you want to add. So if you have up, if you have existing raw data that you that you want to showcase on a map, you're able to do that using something like Here Studio. And again, it is free. It is able for you. It is um, user friendly. So you are able to use it. Um, read through the some of the tutorials, watch some of the tutorial videos, and have the basic understanding of how to now 
showcase the different information that you want to showcase. And of course, you can also share this um, map via a link. So if you are in university, you're a student, or maybe you're working on a project for a particular municipality, you're able to, sh once you've created this map, to share this link with whatever stakeholders are interested in this particular information that you're trying to showcase. So this is another cool little tool that we have available for you. And of course, the last thing I'm going to speak about are the APIs. Uh, just a, a little note about what's available for you. Again, if you are a coder, uh, we do have uh, free APIs available. If you're into routing, if you need traffic, if you need an uh, interactive map on your app or on your website, those features are available for you as well. So I'm happy to chat to anyone afterwards if you need links or informa further information about this. I have plenty of that. Um, it's, I'm happy to, to go into detail about all of that afterwards. But my favorite part, of course, is the actual training. So that is where I want to get into. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything that they want to point out or speak to before we get into the training? Are we all good? Take that as a yes. I'll assume that nobody's sleeping, everyone's awake and happy. It's just that there are no questions, which is fine. Perfect. So as I mentioned, the tool that we use for editing the map, for making changes to the map is called Map Creator. So it is mapcreator.here.com. That's what you type, of course, that's the URL. Um, you sign in, name, surname, email address, password. You create a profile. It is free, and you are basically able to start mapping. So as you can see, that's where I am now. I already have a profile, and I can just hit Start Editing. So. Um, of course, the map can be used to edit different details, different things that you want to, you know, whether it's like businesses opening hours or whether a business still exists in a particular neighborhood, but it can also be used for service delivery um, or for addressing societal ills. So if you want to maybe um, uh, get information about the number of police stations in an area or the number of hospitals and clinics in a rural area compared to an urban area, you're able to use maps like this to get that information and to ensure that it's as updated as possible to 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 try and counter some of those societal ills that exist around us. So it can be used for those different um, uh, uses as well. So that's also an important thing to remember. So this is map creator this is basically what you call your workspace this is what it looks like with a map in the middle and of course all of these features that surround the map and so what i'm going to do today is uh obviously just give you a little i guess background about the different features that exist on the map and then we're going to go straight into the training and give you a little bit of insight about how to do it. So if you are sitting at home or if you have a computer in front of you and you want to join in with the training, please do create an account, join in. It's easy, it's user-friendly. Um, hopefully it is fun for you <laughs> as well. So we will just start at the top of the screen, the top right, of course. Um, sorry, I think it actually signed me out. Let me just sign in again. There we go. Okay, so I was signed out, apologies. I left it for too long. So yeah, so again, this is the map and of course the different features. So in the top right, that obviously is your name, that's where your profile is, your account settings, your sign out. Great. This feature is a web-based tool, but it is also available mobile, via mobile. So on Android and um, iOS, so you are able to download it via any of your um, mobile um, via mobile app and you can use it with your phone with your tablets and so forth and so on you also have language options so maybe if you are comfortable mapping in spanish or in turkish you're able to also change the language over here personally at the moment i'm happy with english so i'm just going to keep it as that there's obviously a help button so if at any point you need assistance with anything you need um to, to, uh, you need tutorial you need a user guide it is available there for you under the help button as well we have a discussion board, so anything you want to discuss or talk about, or you want to have conversations with fellow mappers who are, you know, mapping from around the world, you're able to do that via the discussion board. About Map Creator, very self-explanatory, any information you need about Map Creator as a tool. This is uh, the WebGL beta is a tool that we are still testing at the moment. It's still in the beta stages. We are trying to test the 3D mapping. So um, 
I'm not sure if it'll show. I'll just give you a bit of a bit of insight. I hope it does show. I know it's not available in all areas, so it might not be, which is fine. Don't worry about that. So that's just a beta version that we're testing. And then at the top right over here, this is probably the most important part or the part that's going to be the, of most relevance to you, your search button. This is where you type in whatever region, area, city that you want to make edits to. So in this case, I, I think the last place I was editing was in Randburg in South Africa. So I had in Johannesburg, so I was, I'm still in the Randburg area. But if I wanted to edit, uh, for example, Botswana, so I want to edit Khaborone in Botswana, I will type in Khaborone and it will take, and I will click on Khaborone and it'll take me there. So wherever it is that you are trying to edit, whatever country, whatever region, whatever place, you're able to type it in up here on your search button, and it'll literally take you to that area. And of course, um, your Zoom function, you can zoom in and you can absolutely see all of the features. Let me just change the map, satellite, all of the features in Khaborone. So that's a pretty cool feature. And then you have your what's new button. Again, any sort of updates or information about Map Creator will generally be here. At the moment, there's nothing, so great. Um, you have your, your stuff. A lot of our campaigns um, information is here. So it includes your statistics. So how well you've done in terms of mapping, your ranking compared to others around the world, the number of edits that you've made, any sort of community campaigns that we're running with our communities, um, they all get put over here so as you can see there's campaigns in europe there's campaigns in, in the uk there's a bunch of different campaigns available as well your adopted neighborhoods if at any point you want to adopt a neighborhood this is basically where you would where you would do it so adopting a neighborhood is when you want to sort of be in charge of editing and updating all of the changes that happen within a particular area. So if this is the neighborhood I live in, in Khaborone, and I want to adopt this area, I can adopt it and ensure that any changes to street names, any changes to uh, any apartment buildings that are built, any malls that are built, I ensure that I update the map and make sure that it reflects the reality that's happening on the ground. So you can also adopt a neighborhood as well, if that's something you are um, interested in, in being a part of. Then of course you have your geospace, which is where you can upload your own uh, mapping data. So if you want to use our map as a base map, perhaps you have mapping data that reflects the um, number of um, schools in an area, in a, in a rural area, or number of schools that don't have proper sanitation in an area and you want to upload that onto our map and use our map as a base map, you are able to do that onto our map. So you would obviously, if you are of a GIS background, then you would know, you know, you use a GeoJSON or a shapefile or a CSV and you upload it over here and you're able to then view those details onto the map and use our map as a base map. And then we have a new feature that we are, I'm not 100% sure if it has been rolled out to everybody just yet, but it is called create your own community. So if you have a team of individuals and you want them to update specific mapping info, so you want them to update, uh, I don't know, something to do maybe environmentally, the number of trees in an area or the number of sheltered benches at a bus stop or the number of um, of uh, fire hydrants in an area, you can create your own community, add them to that community and ensure that you can keep up with the edits that they're making, the number of edits that they're doing, the different areas that they're editing. So that is still a new fe feature that is being created. And I think it's such a brilliant initiative as well. So then at the bottom, all of these different uh, little buttons we're going to move on to next so these ones right at the bottom the very very small ones all of these are related to road connections so anything where you're editing information to do with the road has to do with these little buttons so if i click on the first one it says highlight missing connections so if i click on that button at the moment there are no missing connections here which is actually very good it means the map is very um, dense in Khaborone. but let me just take us back to Randberg, and hopefully we will be able to see. I mean, it's not good if we have missing connection. It means there is there is missing mapping data, but it's just an example to show. Um, so if 
I highlight missing connections, if I highlight roads without names. So highlighting roads without names, you can see that all of these roads that have the blue highlight around them are roads that haven't been named yet. So if you are working with a community or you're working on a community project and you want to update road names in a particular area, this is something you could do where you highlight all the roads without names and you get your community to work on that particular area to ensure that it's updated um, and it reflects um, the actual road names. So that's also a feature. You can also highlight one-way roads. You can um, highlight protected roads. So protected roads are generally the, the big roads, the highways, the main carriageways, the roads where you won't be able to edit because they've, you know, they've already obviously been edited and all the changes that happen to these roads are done internally by our internal team that we wouldn't generally get a community, you know, to make changes to the N1 highway or anything like that because that would be a bit risky. So any road that is a protected road, as you can see, you click on um, highlight protected roads and it will highlight that road. So over here, Brom Fisher is a protected road. Um, I don't know what road this is. I don't know if this is my phone. Here. Whatever road this is as well is a protected road. So you can see it is highlighted as well. And also other features, you can highlight roads by speed limit as well. You can highlight roads by speed category. So those features also exist for you. If you are working on specific projects, maybe related to roads or making edits to roads, you can make changes to that um, via using via these um, buttons at the bottom. Then at the bottom, we have this um, feature, uh, this mapillary feature, where you can have street level imagery um, in the different, I guess, in different areas where you see this blue line. Um, I haven't been able to, oh, I guess it's working. Great. Sorry, over the last couple of weeks, it wasn't working for me, but it happens to be working today, which is great. So anywhere where you see these blue lines on the road, it means that we have street level imagery. So you would, like you saw, I clicked on that particular road. This um, webcam or, or, or image appears and I'm able to hit play and I'm able to see the street level imagery in these different areas. So some of these are collection projects that we run with different either maybe cab companies or logistics companies where we put cameras on their dashboard and we get them to collect all of the street imagery in different areas in um, mainly Gauteng that we've run the project. So these are some of the different um, features we also have as part of Map Creator. So also if you are maybe doing a project and you want to have access to, maybe you want some sort of street level imagery information, you can use this feature as well to look at the actual street imagery and, and get any sort of details and attributes from that. So that is Mapillary. And then next to Mapillary, we have got the imagery selection. So you can have your map in satellite imagery. You can have it as, you know, general map view, which is a little bit, you know, boring, if you will. You can't really see much that's going on. I tend to keep it as satellite imagery just because you can see the details a little bit better. So you can actually see the color of the rooftops. You can see the streets. You can see the green trees. It's, it's a lot better this way. Um, I was just hearing someone say they don't have the sound. Can everyone else hear me fine, just to confirm before I carry on? <laughs> yes, okay, okay, I have, I have one yes. So I'm hoping everyone else can hear me. But yes, whoever asked, I am recording the session. So it will be available. Thank you. I've seen Patrick as well can hear. So it will be available to you. I'm so sorry that you can't hear. I'm not sure if you can maybe use your computer as audio or you can maybe uh, work with the audio settings at the bottom of the screen on WebEx. Um, but I hope it does come back. I'm so sorry that you can't hear. Um, so that is the satellite imagery. And then next, oh, so that's the night view as well. So that's just another feature. And then next to that, you have your zoom function. So you can obviously zoom into the map. Um, you want to be a little bit more accurate when you're making edits to the map. Anytime you're editing this map, you have to be at zoom level 16 plus. How you know what zoom level you're in, um, your URL will basically tell you. So obviously you can see your mapcreator.here.com. Next to that, these crazy numbers you see, these, this is the latitude and longitude 
of the area that you are in. So you see 26.12, 27.99, that represents the latitude and longitude. I'm taking you all back to geography, but if you do remember that, that is your latitude and longitude. And the number next to that is your zoom level. So as you can see, I'm zoomed into level 18. If I zoom out, you will see that number will change to 17, will change to 16, will change to 15. So in order to make any edits to this map, I have to be zoomed in to at least level 16. As you can see, it's it's now a little bit clearer. So I always like to zoom in a little bit more just because it's a little bit easier to, to see. And then the buttons on the right. This, These are the main sort of features that we're going to be working on today. Um, starting at the top, I will just take us to the editable objects. So this is going to make sense once we actually do start make, doing the edits, but there are certain features that you can have on the map. Um, you can view on the map, depending on the kind of uh, edits that you are making. So if I click on these two squares at the top, as you can see, the places feature is ticked, which means you can see places on the map. Now, places are these green circles, as you can see over here, that one over there, this one over here. And a place is anything from a school to a hospital, to an ATM, to a mall, to it really is anything. So if I also click on house numbers, the house numbers feature comes on. If I also click on building outlines, my building outlines will come on. But as you can see, the, the, the map gets a little bit messy and, and there's just a lot going on. It's a bit chaotic. So usually when you are mapping, for the most part, you will mostly like to only have the places feature um, selected. So I'm just going to remove the outlines and remove the house numbers. And as you can see, the green circles remain. Those are your places. You also have your support layers. So if you want to see traffic signs as well, mapillary traffic signs, as I mentioned, we do have mapillary on here in some areas. Um, oh, here we go. There's a mapillary tra uh, traffic sign, so a stop sign. Um, in some places, it'll be a yield sign. If you want that information available as well, it's there. Any road closure reports, if a particular road has been closed for whatever reason, whether there's maintenance or, I don't know, there's a festival on the road for the weekend, um, that information is available to you as well. GPS traces, also available, as well as, you know, your discussions and different uh, different discussions that people have about different areas. So if someone is asking about whether, you know, this salon has closed down or whether this place is, you know, still open after COVID and so forth and so on, those kind of discussions also exist on the map, in addition to probe data. So I am now going to get into the actual training. And as we go along, I, I think it will get a little bit easier and, and it will make a little bit more sense. So as you can see, I can actually move my map from left to right, up and down. I'm literally just using my mouse to do that. Of course, if you also have a touch screen, you can use your touch screen to do that as well. And so I am going to find, okay, I think this is fine. This is the area of the map I'm going to use. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just so it's a little bit clearer and I'm going to start adding the different features. So as you see on the right, you can add a road, you can add a place, you can add a house number or you can add a building. Another way that you can do that is by right clicking. So that's usually the way I like to do it. It's a lot easier. So in this case, it's just an example. As you can see, this this isn't really a real real road and I don't actually know where this is so this isn't this is just an example to show you can right click and you can click on add new road when you right click you have all of these different attributes available to you you can add a road you can add a place you can add a house number a roundabout a building outline you can report a problem you can show it in mapillary there's so many different features but the first one I'm going to go to is how to add a new road so I right click and I say add new road and once I do that, this little circle, the two circles with the line appear. And so right now I haven't clicked anything. I'm just moving it around because I now physically have to build my road. So I don't know if we have any, you know, designers on the call or anyone who's going to judge my road, but please don't judge. I'm literally going to just build this road. Um, it's an example showing you how to do it. So once I am happy with, you know, the area that I've chosen to build my road, pretend this is a real road and this is, you know, this is really in this is really on the map. Um, I'm going to extend my mouse forward and then I'm going to click once. And then I'm going to extend it again and click again. And then the last bit of the road over here, 
I'm going to double click. And when I double click, that indicates that it is the end of my road. So as you see, my road had a bit of a bend. So I had to click once here, click once there, and then double click at the end, just to signify the sort of bend in the road. But if you're not too happy with the shape, it doesn't look too, you know, realistic, or it looks a bit stiff, you can also amend the road with these little red nodes on the road, on the actual um, road. So you can move them a little bit to the right, you can make it a little bit more rounded if there are a little bit more curves to the road. And this is just me with my mouse pulling the road to the side, increasing the actual curve of the road and the shape of the road just to make it more realistic. Obviously, this depends on the way the road actually looks. But again, this is just an example. So now I'm happy with the shape of my road. You know, I've built it, looks great, no judgment. We can start making edits to the details of the road. So every time you want, you add something to the road, you're editing something to a feature on the map, this menu will pop up. And this just indicates all of the different uh, attributes that you can change, that you can add, that you can amend to that particular detail that you are adding or changing on the road, on the, on the map. So as you can see, the road type has already been identified as a residential road. Um, the map obviously knows that we are in a residential area by via the location that we're in. But in some cases, it could be a trail road, a pedestrian road. Uh, for the most part, it will be residential. It won't be highway or any of the others. So we just keep it as residential. We're happy with that. The next thing you want to now edit, or the first change you're actually going to make is to the road name. So in this case, it is just an example. I'm just gonna call it example road one. Of course, this if this is a real road and you're doing this from home, you will name it the actual name of the road. Um, my road only has one name, so I only need to fill in one of these rows, and then I can move on to the next section. You can see it's already been identified as, as Randburg, South Africa, and that's the postcode. So then I move on to the speed. Now, I can also change the speed um, or, or make an edit to the speed limit in, of this particular road. So in this case, um, because it's residential, I'm just going to do it as an example and put it at 40 kilometers an hour from point A to point B and then 40 kilometers an hour from point B to point A. Again, you can see on the actual road, sorry, it does indicate A to B and B to A. So it's showing that it's 40, K, 40 kilometers per hour um, coming from both sides of the road. Next thing you can change is the direction of the road. So is it a two-way road? So it goes, you know, A to um, it's, there's two lanes on each side, so there's a lane on each side, sorry, or does it go from A to B, one way road, or does it go from B to A, the other way? In this case, I'll leave it as a two way road, there's a lane on each side, I'm happy with that. The next is you can actually make changes to the number of lanes on the road. Are they one, is there one lane on the road, two to three lanes, more than four lanes? It is a residential road, so for the most part, there will be one lane on each side, so it's already been highlighted, I don't need to select that, I'm done. I'm happy. Next thing I try and change is the structure type. Now, for the most part, this you will be working with open roads. Um, obviously, here and there, there will be tunnels and bridges, but an open road is basically just a road. So as you can see, it's already been identified and highlighted, so I don't actually have to make a change to it. The next thing they want to find out about is the quality of the road, so the surface. Is the road paved or is it poor surface quality? Now, a paved road, as you know, is a tarmac paved road, we, you know, we see them everywhere. A poor surface quality road will be a road that is either a dirt road or a poorly graveled road, um, or even roads with really bad potholes, that where there's more pothole than road, that would generally be a poor surface quality road. If at any point you're confused about what the this menu is asking you for, you have these little eye next to each of the, next to each of the different features. So if I literally hover on the next to the road is paved, it'll tell me switch off if most of the road is made of dirt, sand or gravel. So if the road is obviously of poor quality, I would have to switch off road is paved and switch on poor surface quality. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it as paved road. 
it looks okay, I'm gonna move on. So the next is the road access. Obviously some roads might have different restrictions based on the types of cars that are allowed onto it. Uh, so some roads may not allow big trucks, some roads may not allow um, taxis. So in this case, all of them have been selected, so I can leave it as that. But of course, if you know for sure that maybe trucks aren't allowed, you could obviously deselect that. Maybe delivery vehicles aren't allowed, you can deselect that. That's based on the knowledge that you know about the road. So as you can see, it's all already selected. I'm happy to leave it that way. I can move on. Any other attributes about, about the road, you can also add. So is it good for cycling? Are there seasonal closures? Is the road slippery? These are different additional features that if you know, of course, you can make you can make changes to. So if you know there is a, um, a cycle path or a bike path, then you would know that it is good for cycling. You can take that. Are there seasonal closures? Um, is it closed during some of the season, uh, during some sections of the season? Is the road slippery? Again, this is these are features that you will know and that you will make changes to. So I'm happy with the road being good for cycling. And I've made all the changes to my example road one. I'm happy with it. My road is on the map. I hit save. And once I hit save, my road appears. And as you can see, oh, sorry, it's still saving. <laughs> taking a bit of time. But if I hover over it, you can see that I've named it example road one and it's on the map as example road one. So that is the new road that I've added to the map. And so I'm gonna just try and refresh to see if it speeds up a little. All right, so there we go. So my road is on the map, the road that I've just added. So that is how you add a road to the map. Very simple, very easy. It's just about right-clicking, adding a road, drawing the dimensions of the road, making edits to the features of the road. That's you adding a road. Now, anything you add to the map is something that exists in the real world, but hasn't yet been reflected on our map. So if there is a new road that has been built, this example road one, but our map doesn't yet show it, then we would add it to the map because it hasn't been reflected onto our map yet. Anytime you are editing something onto the map, it means it already exists on our map, but you just need to edit a particular attribute about it. So for example, if I see this example road one and I want to make an edit to it, I just click once on the actual road and my menu will appear. And if there's a specific change that has happened on the road, maybe the speed limit has changed or the name of the road has changed, I can make changes to that as well. So instead of 40 kilometers per hour, maybe it's actually 20 20 kilometers per hour. And of course, these are changes that you would know about, that you are certain are, you know, that 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 are happening in the real world. So it's now 20 kilometers per hour. I've made that change. I can hit save, and that change has now been saved. So when I click on my road again and I go to my speed limit, you can see that it's now been changed to 20 kilometers an hour. And so that is basically how you edit anything on a road or any anything on the map. So anything you are adding to the map, if you are adding a road, adding a place, those are things that exist in the real world but haven't been reflected in our map. Anytime you are editing a feature, it means that that you, it already exists on our map, but you are just edit, editing a specific attribute about it. So something has changed, whether it's opening hours, whether it's the speed limit of the road, sometimes the name of the road as well. So those are changes you can make. In this case, because my road is not real, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say, remove this road. Because again, it was just an example. I'm going to hit save and my road will disappear. So that is me adding a, uh, sorry, a road to the map, adding and removing a road to the map. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is how to add a place to a map. So like I mentioned, a place can be absolutely anything from a hospital to a clinic, to a mall, to a dentist's office, to an ATM. A place really constitutes anything, any, any sort of attribute or, or, or building or, or thing that you can see in the real world can be a place on our map. So similar to how we added a road, um, you know what, I'll just use this, um, let me just move it to the center, sorry. I'm gonna use this building over here. Again, it's just an example. I don't know what this actually is, but I'm going to add a place here. So similar to how we added a road, we right-clicked, we said add a road. 
Very similar is how we add a place. Again, right click and say, add new place. And once you do that, again, our menu is going to pop up. And this is where we start making the edits to the attributes of the place, so the details of the place. So the first thing you need to um, you need to edit or add is the actual category of the place. So as you can see, there are hundreds of different categories that fall under these, hundreds of different subcategories, sorry, that fall under these categories. So is it an eat or drink? So eat and drink is anything from a bistro to fine dining to a tea house to a food market or stall. Um, natural and geographical can be mountain peaks, can be waterfall. Uh, the one with the most number of sub um, sub uh, sub levels is the businesses and services. So as I said, it can be anything from an ATM to auto parts to business services to car repair. It can really, really be anything. So as you can see, the businesses and services list is quite long. So in this case, I am going to choose my category as a hotel but I don't always want to spend time searching these different categories. I don't always have the time to be searching for these little subcategories within them. So what you can just do is type, literally type in the word, word hotel, not adult shop, sorry, hotel. Um, and as you can see, the different categories are hotel and hotel motel. In my case, it's just a hotel. So I'm just going to click on that. And I'm happy with that. Of course, if there is another category to it. Um, so for example, if like how some car washes also have like a takeaway joint next door, you can have two different categories or three different categories in a particular place. But in this case, it's just a hotel. So I'm happy with it just being hotel. And then the next thing I'm gonna add is the name of the place. So I'm going to again, use my favorite word example, hotel number one. It's a one word, it's a one name hotel, so I don't need to add any other features about it, I'm happy. The next feature that I can edit is whether this is a chain hotel or not. So obviously a chain, as you all know, is, is a chain, different um, types of industries have different chains, whether it's food, whether it's hotel, um, whether it's cleaning services, they have different chains. So um, in my case, if so if you are trying to identify a specific chain, the chain within the different categories you've selected will obviously be different. So because I selected hotel, it's going to show me hotel chains. So it's going to show me Marriott, it's going to show me design hotels, it's going to show me garden court, it's going to show me Hilton, all these different chains. In this case, just for the example, I'll choose Holiday Inn as a chain. Again, if a place isn't a chain, we obviously don't need to change it. Uh, you just, you leave the chain part blank and that's fine. The next thing you obviously need is the address of the place. So the house number, the postal code, um, this is just an example. So I'll just put one, two, three, four, the postal code, uh, let's put Randburg, which I think is 2194. I'm happy with that. It's on Boundary Road. As you can see, it's identified the closest road to it. And that is the, um, the also the entrance to the place. So I'm happy with Boundary Road. The next section you can change are the contact details of the place. So the telephone number, the um, email address, the website, all of these different features you can add to this uh, place details. So if you are working on a category, maybe you're working for the tourism department, and you want to ensure that every single hotel or every single lodge or um, or B&B uh, &B or small business, whatever, has their details updated onto this map so that any tourist or anyone coming into South Africa that's using this map is able to get all of the details from this um, from this particular category. You can also do that. You can run a campaign where you get people to update the telephone numbers, the email address, the websites to ensure that they're, they're up to date and they reflect the actual um, details of this hotel or chain or wherever it is that you're trying to update. So this is where you will put the different details about the contact information. The next se section, sorry, are the other attributes. So you can also select um, the opening hours of the place. So if it is open during selected hours, you can of course change the days that it's open, the times that it's actually open. Is it open all the time? That means, you know, obviously it's 24 hours. In most cases, most hotels that I know of anyway are. So you can leave it at open all the time. If of course you don't have the opening hours, then leave 
it as no opening hours available, that's okay too. Another thing that's very important is having the wheelchair accessibility information. So is there full wheelchair access? Is it limited? Is there no wheelchair access? Again, these are the details that you can fill in. Um, it's just right now an unknown wheelchair access, which I'll leave it at. Uh, but again, a very important attribute that we that that needs to be filled in when you are uh, putting in the details of a place. The last bit of information, of course, is Corona related. So over the last few months, it's just been added to Map Creator. So you can um, select whether the place is still open. Obviously, in some cases, some hospitals were being used. Some, sorry, hotels were being used as hospitals. So that also is a, a segment that um, you can click or an option that you can click if you know the details of. If not, if not, you keep it blank. Um, and once I'm happy with that, I can just hit save and my hotel will appear. My example hotel one appears. So I've just added a place. And again, similar to how after we added the road, if we wanted to edit a specific feature about it, we would just click it on the actual um, place in this case, and you can make changes to whatever it is. So maybe it's example hotel, three and not one anymore. Um, you can also make that change. In addition to that, sorry, I did forget to mention that you can also upload a picture of the place. So this is specifically, you know, for, for different places, it's usually used for like hotels and lodges and B&Bs. If you want to see the entrance of the place, how it actually looks from the front, you can um, upload a picture of the place. So if you've been to this place and you have a really cool picture, you can upload that as well. So other people are able to see what it actually looks like. So that's a feature too. So once I've changed my example, hotel one to example, hotel three, I hit save and my hotel name has changed to example hotel three. So again, that is you just making an edit to an existing feature on the map. Uh, maybe there's been a change in an attribute and so forth and so on. So again, like I did before, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say remove this place because it obviously doesn't exist and I don't want to get in trouble. Um, and I'm gonna hit never existed and then submit and my hotel will disappear at some point, there we go, it's gone. So that is me adding a place. So again, like I said, a place can be anything, your hotels, your ATMs, your hospitals, your clinics. If you are working on projects where you want to, um, where you want certain mapping information to be uploaded, whether it's in rural areas, urban areas, whether it's uh, phone numbers of a place or wheelchair accessibility of a place, those are also some of the cool projects and things that you can uh, work on on Map Creator with you know, your team of individuals or your students or whoever it is. Now, the third category and possibly the easiest category that we're going to look at are house numbers. So um, earlier we were looking at the house numbers um, editable objects. So right now the places category is on so you can see all the green circles, but you can also turn on the house numbers category. And once you do that, all of the house numbers appear in this particular area. So if you are working on up updating house numbers in a particular area, um, house numbers here are obviously very well updated. So I'm trying to look for an area that's a little less populated. Um, this is actually a good problem to have. It's a good thing to have the map that is as up to date. Okay, so it's getting better and better. Um, let's see. Let me work down here, okay, yeah, let's use this one over here. All right, so similar to how we added a place and added a road, we again hit that right click button and we add a new house number. So right click, add new house number. The easiest one of all, as I mentioned, you literally do just have to put in the house number. So I'm just going to put one, two, three as my example, and then the building name. So the building name is a category that's reserved for specific commercial buildings. So if this was a dentist's office or if this was an apartment building or a hospital, then I would put in example hospital three or um, Sir John's hospital, whatever name it had. But if this is 
somebody's house or it is your grandmother's home or it is your auntie's daughter's sister's home you do not need to put their name here that is not the kind of data we're trying to 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 get or receive uh that's that has nothing that we have no interest in who actually lives here we only care about the name if it is a commercial building so if it is a dentist's office a hospital a clinic an atf whatever then we care but if it's somebody's house if it's your house, if it's your friend's house, then you don't actually have to put Joanne's house or, you know, Lisa's house. We actually don't care about that information. It only matters if it is a commercial building. So once um, I'm happy with the street and house number, I'm no building name, I hit save similar to how we did before, and my number 123 will appear. Very simple. Again, I'm going to remove it because again, it was just an example. So remove and I'm going to hit save. Now the very last sort of um, feature that you can edit, and I'm just trying to look, I'm sorry, for a bit of an open space. There we go, over here. The next thing that you can actually make um, edits to are buildings. So you can literally add a building. So again, I know there's a tennis. Okay, let me just do it over here. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to right click similar to how we did it before. And I can say add new building outline. So we're going to imagine there's a building over here. And I want to outline the building, add a building outline. So you can see once I right clicked and said add new building outline, the bu building outlines for the surrounding buildings appeared. So as you can see on the left over here, this house has an outline. This little one at the top has an outline as well. So all of them already have outlines. So I don't want to work over that already. So I'm just going to use an example on this open field. So similar to how we drew a road, again, your design skills are coming in over here and you're going to draw the building outline. So my two circles appear and now I can actually physically draw. So I'm going to click once and then I'm going to click again here and then I'm going to double click over here and that indicates that I'm, I finished drawing i'm done drawing whatever building or whatever it is that i'm doing so once that once i'm done drawing my outline my menu appears again so any change edit add addition anything you're doing to the map your menu will always appear just as a reminder to change the attributes and the details of whatever it is that you are changing or adding to the map so in this case um you the type of building is is the first uh, feature that you can edit. So is it an education building? Is it a school? Is it a historical building? So maybe a museum of sorts? Is it a park leisure? In this case, I'll just say education. I'll pretend there's a building there and it's a cool school. So I'm going to say education. And then of course the building name, again, it's if you if it's an actual commercial building. So I'll say school example one, that's the name of my building. I'm happy with that. And then everything from there after is a little bit um, more technical. So you don't necessarily have to know all of this. Again, you're editing details that you are aware of, things that you know. So the building height, again, if this is something you don't know, then leave it at zero. I personally do not know the height of every single building around me, so I will not attempt that. Then, of course, the roof style. This usually you can see, you know, from different buildings, the type of, of um, roof style that they have. Is it a hip? Is it a gable? Is it a pyramid? Again, this is not my background, so I, I do not know architecture that great, so I'm just going to say hip. Um, you can also fill in the roof angle. Again, very technical details that you don't necessarily have to know. If you do know them, great. If not, again, leave them as is. Then the roof color. Again, uh, uh, you can change this feature, um, sorry, just by sliding, obviously, the, the colors on the color spectrum. And in this case, I'll make it sort of a ready kind of color. Once I'm happy with all of these details, again, I can also um, upload a, uh, a photo to this particular building if I wanted to, if I have a photo of it from the front, I can upload that as well in addition to these edits. And once I'm happy with that, I can hit save. And my building will appear. So again, as you can see around, these are building outlines that have already been done for the surrounding areas. This is obviously a suburb, so these are houses around. Um, so this could be, you know, anything from a school to 
to anything really. So if you don't actually know the classification of a school or whatever, you just know it's a building that exists there and you want to work on the outlines of the building, then you don't necessarily have to choose the category of building. Just make sure, you know, you obviously outline it well, um, fill in any features that you know, those that you don't know, again, leave them blank and that's okay. So again, I'm just gonna delete the building because it is not a true building. So those are the four main features that we have on Map Creator that you can edit and make changes to. Um, as I mentioned, we do have the Map My Community feature, which is being, uh, or create your own community feature, sorry, that is being um, that is being worked on and will be available to everyone really, where you can make edits to specific information. So if you want people to work on updating the, um, the clinics in an area or updating the sheltered bench information in a particular area. Those are different attributes, specific attributes that you can work on as well. So uh, it's not just the roads, it's not just the places, it's not just the house numbers and the buildings. There are other features as well that you can make edits and updates to on our map. And like I mentioned, it can be used for anything. So like you saw, we could we could make changes to businesses details, um, whether we're helping with tourism, whether we're ensuring that certain small businesses are actually being um, recognized on the map and their information is as up to date as possible. That's something you could do too. You can make sure that all the hospitals in an area are updated, the clinics, the police stations, all of that stuff really contributes to ensuring that you know cities are obviously safer, that we have all of the attributes and information necessary and represented on the map as much as possible um, to ensure that um, communities and societies as a whole are safer and do have all of the details, all of their details related to location attributes um, on, to, on the map. So that is pretty much the bulk of what I wanted to um, go through today. I hope that everyone has learned something a little bit different. Again, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a very user-friendly tool. Um, we run a community mapping program as well. So if you are from a school or a university or any organization and you want to take part in that or get people to be a part of that, please don't, um, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy, happy, happy to host these kind of sessions. I do tons of virtual trainings and, and I'm happy to be of assistance if need be. So are there any questions? Does anyone want any further information or need to go back and do something again? Is it all clear to everybody on the call? I, I'll take that as a yes. I'll take it as a yes that everybody is clear. It makes sense. Oh, um, okay. We do have a question. Um, whether charities ever use this information? Yes, it is available. So what we technically do is when working with like NGOs or any sort of organization, we, we, Try and train as many individuals as possible to know, first of all, how, that the first of all to even know that there is an online platform that they can use for free to have um, information related to different location attributes. But also, um, for example, if they want to increase, you know, the safety in a particular area, they want to maybe discuss how there's a lack of police stations in one area compared to another, or the distance between a rural community and their closest police station. This information is available for them as well. So um, whether they have that data and they want to use our map as a base map to then download all that information and provide it to whatever municipality or whether they are doing a report on, I don't know, the environmental effects of having certain factories in urban areas close to rivers or whatever, this information is indeed available to them as well. So yes, in short, it is available. Are there any other questions? I saw someone raise a hand, but I'm not sure. You can also, you can type your question if you're not comfortable speaking. I don't mind at all. Yes, it was me, Tandega. I raised my question. I just wanted to ask Nena, 
Like, mm -hmm. uh, don't you guys have like a, a training site? Because uh, I saw that this is like a live map editing tool. So maybe if you just want to play around with like whatever is on like um, on Map Creator, is there like another uh, I don't know a site where one can do that or not? No, there isn't. But what I tend to say is if you do want to play around and maybe you want to see how to add a road, edit a road and, and all of that information, you can do that using Map Creator. But I would just say maybe just don't save. So as you saw with each of the edits that I was making, I would save at the end. So um, if you don't want to, like, if you're worried that, you know, it'll be a big mess or whatever, just don't save whatever edit it is that you are working on. So you can go on and right click and play with how to add a place and how to add a road and how to shape a road and all of that information and um as long as you don't save then you can't do anything wrong like nothing will go wrong and if you do happen to save um you can always right click and delete so if you do that immediately then it it for the most part it won't go through that verification process and so forth and so on it'll just it'll be like it never existed. So, so I do encourage you to, to go on and play and, and don't be intimidated by it. There's, there's very little that could go wrong um, unless you, know, you start deleting things and deleting hospitals and places, that is terrible. But um, as long as you don't save anything or if anything you do save is a mistake, you can just delete it immediately, it should be fine. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Is everyone else okay? Okay, I will take that as everyone being happy. Um, like I said, I hope this was beneficial to you um, and you do, um, you are able to maybe take some time later to play with the tool, to figure out how to use it, to introduce it to your network as well. Like I said, students or organizations that might be interested in it, NGOs, private organizations, government institutions and municipalities. I'm always happy to assist. Um, and if you, anyone needs an additional training session or anything like that, I'm always, always, always happy to assist with that as well. So thank you all so much for being a part of the session. I do appreciate it. It. Thank you so much to Bella and the team um, for having us here. It's been great um, and it's been fun. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I hope you all have a lovely day.